Okay, so what are we going to do next? What we're going to do is password change, I suppose. Sorry, great point there. Um, I made the odd... Um, I've missed that stage out completely. You are absolutely right. We should be checking that when we sign up, we don't have that already in the system. So I'm going to add that in quickly now because it, it's really simple, um, like everything is in Wappler typically. If we go into here, into our validator, and we're going to validate on the email, and our validation rule is that the data it does not exist in the database. So we're using connection of SCUD, we're using uh, the table of users, our column in this particular case we're going to be checking is our email and then we're going to tell it the linked field is linked to the field that was called email and that is the name of the particular input box within the form that's sending the information and that allows it to be able to bounce that um, error message that we see down here, that's editable. So bounce that error message back down to the app connect end. So yes, there we are. We have that validate data stage. Um, yeah, the find duplicate site type thing is amazingly simple. Um, so thanks, thanks for bringing that up. It's a stage you that missed completely and it's so easy to do um, there's no excuse for not doing it so okay we're going to do now a pa password change just waiting for <laughs> those little green boxes getting the I I'm a bit of a, a clicker rather than a shortcut person so I, I tend to have to wait till those um, notifications go this is going to be um, or password change. We'll build this one from scratch, shall we? Uh, container, row, column, form. Within the form, we're going to have a Form there, so we've got that's it. We've now got two in there. What we're going to do is this is going to be password. I'm going to just push that form down a little bit because it's a bit close to the top of the screen. So this will be our password. And this is going to be our repeat. Now I would normally have added a third one in, in here at the top because what I would have done is to request the current password as well as an additional level of security because we're trying to cut corners a little bit here. I'm not going to do that, um, but I will talk you through how that would be done when we go on to the server connection side of things. It's going to drop a... Row, column, and a button in there. And that's going to be change. That's going to be submit button, and it's going to be, let's make it green. Let's make sure we name these fields properly. That's going to be password. And we'll call it our second one repeat. Let's give that a quick save. So first of all, we're going to look at validation. Um, our validation on this one is going to be the same as we had before. So our validation rules are going to be it's required. It's going to be um, whoops 
minimum length of 8 characters. And it's going to have to be alphanumeric, sorry, I couldn't find that there. And our second one, we can simply say should be equal to the password field above. So we're forcing the validation by just take those out. Our password has to be eight characters minimum. It has to be alphanumeric. It is required and the repeat must be identical to that first one. So that's our form created. Yet another server action. Our server action in this case is going to be change. And our steps, fairly straightforward, are going to be creating our database connection. We are going to be dropping a security provider in. We are going to then have a, an update query, which is going to update that particular password. Actually, no, before that, we really should pull those globals across. So let's select that form within that form. We've got them and there, and I'm, we've got the two fields pulled across. We actually can totally ignore repeat. We won't be using it, but uh, it's, it's obviously been pulled across. So in our database update, we've got going into the users. We don't need to do anything with role. We're not changing the username our password let's remember this time to encrypt it the 256 encryption our salt of wapla rocks and our condition will be that the user id notice we're not passing any user id over we're going to be referring to that security provider it will be the security identity that helps to stop people trying to spoof the um, password changes it means that the identity which record is updated is handled totally internally at server end which means that they can't try and hack forms and change um, user ids etc so it's a really useful feature so we've got our update there it's it's set we've remembered this time to encrypt the password so now if we go over to that change form we can make that a server connect form let's select that change action it's got to be a post let's check that button is a submit button great so now we need to just do is to confirm or add some confirmations in um, I'm going to add a browser component again I'm going to add that notifications I can almost when I when I'm doing something I can almost do with those in by default because I think I use them on virtually every page that I do um, So within our server events now, server connection, if we've got uh, an error, we're going to simply tell, tell the user that there's been an error. That's the one that you hope you will never see because generally that's uh, head scratching time. And then we've got the success action. So that means that that password has been updated. And we're just going to use go to and I'm just going to go back to the uh, index PHP page. Okay, let's save that. Um, I think that's everything that we need to on that one. So uh, let's run that. We're
currently logged in. So I'm going to change my password to something similarly complicated. I should really have set these fields to... <laughs> You notice I've actually set that to not the same rather than be the same. Um, let's just we'll call that equal to instead, shall we? Rather than not equal. Equal to password field. Okay, let's run that again. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I should have done in the first place. We'll make those password rather than text fields so that we get those asterisks showing rather than the actual letters of the password itself. Let's save that and let's run that. And now, just double check we still are logged in as me. Yep. Change that password now. Change. Okay, we've got an error. So let's go straight into our developer tools. Let's say uh, called an undefined method. Not equal to. Okay, so that tells us exactly where the problem lies. Uh, if you remember that error message referred to um, something being not equal to. If you recall, a few moments back we had the client side validation set incorrectly. We had the password and repeat password instead of being set to being the same, had with them set to being different. And of course, when we've imported our globals. What we've done is we've imported that incorrect validation. I'm um, going to solve it the easy way. That repeat stage of the, the repeat value has absolutely no benefit now that we're at server end. So rather than messing about with the validations, I'm just going to remove that completely. We can then save that server action. If we then run that again, let's uh, change the password. Hit change. And there we see that routine has worked correctly.